You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Living Large with host Kelly Houghton. To touch, move, and inspire is what drives Kelly. She's here to help you learn, grow, and create balance in search of a more powerful life. Adjust, adapt, and overcome. Now, please welcome the host of Living Large, Kelly Houghton. Good evening and welcome to Living Large. This is Kelly live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome to tonight's show and thank you for tuning in. If you would like to give us a call and have this conversation with us, the number is 866-451-1451. Tonight we are going to talk about the Hash House Harriers. As a show about living large, about enjoying life, about not taking things too darn seriously that you spend all of your time stressed out. The Hash House Harriers is a group of people who provide just that comic relief on any given day. The Hash House Harriers has been going on since 1938. It is a club or organization whatever you want to call it, generally referred to as a hash or a hash run or simply as hashing. It has nothing to do with drugs, right? It started so long ago that it has its history in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and there's probably some other people who love to talk about the history of it. I like to talk about the personality of it for the most part. We've got a few people here that are going to join us and play part of this conversation with us and explain a little bit more about some of what to expect when we got started as far as individually, how it is we managed to come upon such an interesting and seemingly odd group of folks. My experience has been that we have people of all ilks and all careers which entertains me greatly. And if you've heard this show before, you know that if I am entertained greatly, then we're probably going to talk about it. And we have plenty of stories to share. We've got plenty of people across the globe that may call in or may just sit back and laugh and listen. But if they want to hear something specific or have a story to tell, then it would be a good idea to give us a call tonight. We have a couple of people here with me, for starters, and hopefully we'll hear from some of our other friends, probably from Texas, maybe from the Phoenix area where we are coming to you live this weekend. There is an event. So some basics about what happens. Many large cities have what we call a kennel because it is essentially a hare and the hound game. So each kennel has a little bit of its own personality with the same traditions around the world. It is a worldwide organization. If you've never heard of us, it's because you may not have a sense of humor. Sorry to tell you. But if you come and join us, perhaps you can gain one or at least sit back and appreciate those of us who do have one, which is just fine. We include anybody who has a pretty good tolerance for adolescent behavior, shall I say, or at least an ability to recognize good, clean fun. It's not fun. It's not funny. It's dangerous. Actually, clean is debatable. We run through mud. We talk smack. 
there is a lot of sexual innuendo. And we will clarify some of that. It is in no way what some people have decided is a neighborhood for necessarily swingers, though I suppose there are some in our group and in our midst. I've seen it, witnessed it, perfectly good and fine. Each individual gets the opportunity to express themselves fully or sit back and watch and when a trail is laid, and if I did not clarify, we are running trails or walking trails. You don't have to be a big runner. You can walk along aimlessly, carrying your beverage of choice, and chat with your friends, or you can run and solve the checks. By that, I mean there is someone laying a trail, and the rest of the hounds have absolutely no idea where we're going. So you could be on a true trail. You could be on a false trail. You could be on a really long, long, bad trail. And that is what we call a YBF. And perhaps someone will explain more of that as we chat this evening. While we are going along these trails and taking good trails, bad trails, we have songs we like to sing. There's only about 400,000 of them. We steal them from the ruggers. We make them up as we go along. We will take your favorite song and defile it so badly that you'll never, ever see your favorite song quite in the same way, which again is greatly entertaining to some of us. You do not have to be a drinker. You do not have to be a runner, although it is classified as a drinking club with a running problem. It is not necessary that you partake necessarily in either of those. As I mentioned, as long as you've got a sense of humor, you'll probably be just fine. We try to weed out the whiners by encouraging them to play along and be able to laugh at themselves. If you have secrets and you're unable to laugh at yourself, we will find out what they are and talk about it excessively until you are so desensitized about what has happened that you are able to simply join in the fun and not be so paranoid about who cares. In life, you need people that will just take you for who you are. And my experience with this group is that they do just that. Unless you're a superior jerk, and then which case we will figure out a way to shuffle you out the door without you even noticing with a smile on our faces and a song to send you on your way. For the most part, there are millions of us across the globe. Perhaps you've met a few and didn't even know it. Perhaps you've seen us in airports and didn't even recognize it until you hear a song or you see a mark that signifies that you are on trail. You may have no idea. As you walk across any city street, you may see arrows, circles, body part checks, shall we say. And from now on, you will be able to recognize that a hare, a harriet, or a hound has been on that very street sometime in the near past. The way to figure out about your nearest kennel is to go online. Generally, the Facebook groups are private. With that, we are able to be open, enjoy ourselves, and not have our bosses figure out what we're doing on Saturday afternoon, which is part of the draw for the whole thing. I get to go and play and not have other people digging into business. Some of y'all might be a little bit private, and this is a very good way to shake out the cobwebs, have some fun, get some exercise, and not have all of your business plastered across the internet. And we like it that way. But you can find us by various websites. If you look up Hash House Harriers or hashing or running in your city, somebody can direct you to the nearest start to trail. Trail can be of any length. It can be urban in the streets and it might be in the mud, in the dirt, through the mall through your neighborhood. And when we come back from break, we are going to tell some stories and talk more on this topic. So stay tuned. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. On on. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. 
I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page -page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Welcome back. This is Kelly, living large live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So happy you guys have tuned in this today. We're talking about the Hash House Harriers. If you would like to be part of this conversation, make sure and give us a call, 866-451-1451, and Abraham will patch you through so we can include you in this conversation. I was explaining a little bit about our little counterculture called the Hash House Harriers. One thing that you may notice when you show up is the weird names. Part of that is you get to keep your privacy, much like the internet privacy and Facebook and all of that. The group at some point will bestow upon you a hash name. Do not come with your own. Yours will be much worse when the kennel gets a hold of you because we do have a sense of humor. So today, who I have with me is Down and Dirty. Hi, this is Down and Dirty from San Antonio. And we also have Dr. Spankenstein. Hello, Dr. Spankenstein from San Antonio. And these are my Texas peeps, and we are in Phoenix, Arizona for an event. Every other year, we celebrate with about 2,000 of our closest friends and righteous debauchery. And this is our Inner America's Hash, and every other year from that is World Inner Hash, Kennels can vary in size. How big is your San Antonio kennel? You know, I'm not sure the the total membership. I know that uh, we've had anywhere between 20 to 30 people on a run to 50 to, oh gosh, I don't remember. We had a 1,500 run. Um, I think there was over 100. I don't, it, it was quite quite a good turnout, so. It just depends on the run in the day. It depends on the candle as well. There's uh, several candles in San Antonio. I think at this point there's about four of them. And uh, each candle has a very, various uh, uh, number of members as well. There's some some uh, overlap, but some people preferentially go to one candle versus another. Okay. Very nice. How often are you getting new members, would you say? I would say there's probably a, at least one new person showing up every week, maybe every other week. And those people are called uh, virgins. Oh, see, you get to be a virgin again. Isn't that nice? At which point we, we try to treat you nice enough to where you will stick around and come and join us again. It, it depends on the kennel as to their sticking power for sure. If you're getting a virgin about every other or about every week, 
then how many of them would you say stick around? We scare a lot of them away, I think. Do you? <laughs> Are you scaring them with the trails? Not, well, we, you know, there's always the joke that um, when we get to the end of the run, did you did you keep up with the or did the virgin keep up with you or did you lose another virgin? And you know, we kind of hope that we didn't lose them because uh, that's one way to have them not want to come back. Um, but I, w- I would say that a good number of the folks keep up with it. Not everybody. It's not everybody's thing, and that's that's completely fine. Right. I think uh, the trails can run some people off. The names can definitely run some people off because, well, some of them are awful, but there's a story behind most of them. And you're around for probably about six runs before you get a name, but it still does get some people's attention, I think. And it's hard to know. And Circle is what we do after, and that's where we discuss the tradition and fractions and things like that. Would you like to give the listeners a little bit of an idea of what some of the infractions of traditions or what some of the traditions are? Um, Sure. So when you start, this is down and dirty, and when you start hashing, um, you, of course, start as a virgin, and after your virgin run, you're no longer a virgin, but for most kennels and There are some differences in cultures between kennels, some traditions between kennels, but uh, most of them, if you don't have a hash name, you have to put the word just in front of your name. So you might be just Sally or just Timothy um, because you're not worthy of a a name yet. Or or no fucking name, Sally or Timmy. Right. So there's other ways. Depending on the region. Exactly. Different ways that they handle that. Um, and then, of course, one of our traditions is once you're a named hasher during a hash event, you can't use your real name. You have to use your hash name and you have to call other people by their hash name. Uh, that'll get you in trouble. To be clear, this is a 21 and over group. There are some family friendly kennels, but for the most part, it is people of drinking age. We don't want to have to watch out and babysit people who are not that. And if we frequent bars on a specific run, then we don't want to have to worry about that or leave them on the sidewalk. That's right. So other other traditions, um, oh, let's see. The if, clothing. So if you're a named hasher, you're supposed to wear cl- clothing that signifies the hash, whether it's a hash logo or a t-shirt that says the hash Uh, in many kennels. I don't think this was when we hashed in Germany, but in many kennels you have to wear a whistle if you're a named hasher so that you can signal where you are and people can hear you. Um, Technically you're not supposed to wear new sneakers to the hash. If you wear new sneakers, probably something bad is going to happen to you and your sneakers. You're probably going to have to drink out of them, whether you've run through cactus, mud, dog crap, a puddle, puddle a pond, sewage, and, and, swa- ugh. sewage. Ugh. And I'm, I'm a high maintenance whiny hasher myself, which no one would dispute. And <laughs> since, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't dare put anything to, um, I wouldn't drink anything, uh, that's been in my sneaker that we say <laughs> in hashing, what doesn't go in you goes on you. And so I'll dump the whole thing on my head before I down any beverage that's been in my shoe. <laughs> and Spankenstein likes to wear the mesh shoes. So right. by the time he gets it to his lips, most of it has drained out of the mesh anyway. Exactly. Leaving him with a little bit of beer chunk at the bottom. Um, which again, for the rest of us, is completely entertaining. So... It's good to know what the traditions are, but you don't have to know before you go. Generally, if somebody takes you, then they will help explain what's happening. If you're finding out about it for the first time today, then you can go and tell them Cherry sent you because they will ask you, how did you find us? Because they're curious and, you know, they like to make jokes of people. So we're going to talk more on that whenever we come back from the break. So be sure and stay tuned. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. On on. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. 
I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page -page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve this stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. All right. Welcome back. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the DBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We are talking about the Hash House Harriers and, well, all the cool stuff that goes with it and some of the hashers that have joined us on this conversation. And we have a caller on the line. Hello, caller. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I am Anal Rose. And you are calling from where? I am currently in uh, Bremerton, Washington, with my lovely wife, Drug'em and Plug'em. Um, Very nice. But we are transplants been all over the country. Yes, and your mother hash is where? Would you like to tell the listeners? My mother hash is the fat SOB in La Maddalena, Italy, which is unfortunately no longer with us. Um, so sad. But, uh, I claim the, the mighty hump and hash in San Diego. Very nice. Very nice. Perhaps we'll have you sing us a song in a little bit. Would you like to continue right. on? Uh, were there some traditions that are near and dear to your heart in concerning the hash? Uh, my favorite traditions um, uh, are in welcome, basically anything that welcomes the, the virgins to, to the hash. I, I, I think that's the most important thing about hashing is um, – how everybody treats each other, uh, everybody's welcomed that wants to be welcomed, and um, I go out of my way to make sure that the new hashers uh, want to come back the next time. Yes, I try to as well, for sure. And there what about you guys? Yes? Uh, there's some traditions that some hashes do that I think are better for uh, the uh the visiting hashers or seasoned hashers, and if you throw them right at the virgins at the first the first time, they're not likely to come back because it's too much for them. Um, watching it's different than participating in it. Um, you're kind of under a microscope when you're in the middle of a circle of a bunch of strangers, and they're all laughing at you. So uh, I try oh, to. Oh, we're treat, laughing with you. <laughs> well, they don't know that yet. <laughs> I, I actually agree with him. I think that you need to you need to treat your virgins kindly, sort of. Right. It it kind of goes along the same idea with if somebody's willing to joke with you and tease with you that they like you, and there's a fine line and there's an art and a talent to doing that and keeping someone knowing that you want them there as opposed to giving them such a hard time that they feel like they need to run away or they're not wanted there. 
which is is kind of yeah. why I called this particular group of folks together, uh, Anal Rose and these guys here with me in Phoenix, which Anal Rose will be here in Phoenix with us here in the next couple of days. But there's, I gathered these folks because they are kind to the virgins. They do go out of their way to include them without necessarily being mothering. I'll try to guide them to the fact that we're going to call you in circle a number of times. And if you don't want to get too loaded, you want to make sure you remember everything, then you should probably only put a little bit of your beverage in the glass. And that will (laughs) help to uh, keep you from hurting yourself too much. And not all kennels appreciate that. And they like to see virgins get really drunk. And I'm not in support of that so much. So it really is a kennel difference. Plus, if you get too drunk and you uh, vomit, there's a good chance your name will have something to do with uh, emesis. So, yeah, (laughs) there's that. (laughs) There's that. Okay. What about some other traditions that um, are important and near and dear? I love the themed runs. And that's one of the the, uh, attractions of the hash. Pretty much if you're a hasher, you never give away or throw away a costume because chances are in the years to come, there will be another hash where it's completely appropriate to wear that outfit. Yep. One of the tra- traditions that we particularly enjoy is the, the red dress ones. Yes. Uh, our favorite by far is the, the New Orleans red dress one. We've done it three years in a row. Yes. And it's just an absolute blast. It's an event that starts on a Thursday, runs to a Sunday. Uh, the uh, actual red dress run on Saturday is uh, open for anyone. And the actual uh, the Thursday, Friday hashes are only for hashers. And uh, it's just a really great time. Lots of people from all over the country. Um, and, of course, the, uh, the red dress when everybody wears a red dress, hash or not. Um, it goes through um, Bourbon Street, New Orleans. And uh, even people that are not participating in the actual uh, run will wear red dresses in support. And uh, the uh, proceeds go to uh, charity. Yes. And it's just a really, really good time. Yes, for those of you guys who are thinking even the guys wear red dresses, yes. And most guys look better in an A-line, just in case you're wondering. Anywhere from an 18 to a 25 is probably going to fit you. Yeah, so one of the things that Dr. Spanks and Stein and I like to do is travel hash. That's another benefit of being a hasher is that you can go to any major city uh, in the country, any you know, any country, and fi- especially if there's uh, mil- military bases Uh, You can find a hash and you just show up or call ahead, as I said, or as you said, you know, you go online, you look up the local hash house harriers, there's usually contacts, you can um, call them, let them know that you're coming, they'll give you information or anything you need to know about the area, and uh, you just show up and have a good time, it's a run. Yep. And you have an instant connection wherever you go, if you meet another hasher, uh, there's an instant bond, because Mm -hmm. it's... uh, it's an international community. Yes, as a as a worldwide international community, it will include anyone. I think I just got called for break. I'm not sure, but we are going to talk more about this international community and some of the traditions and some of the themes and favorite themes whenever we come back. And some of the costumes that you may need for that. So we are going to go ahead and duck out for a short break. I think that's what I heard over the my earphones there. So be sure and stay tuned in. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. On on. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. 
Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story, is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Welcome back. This is Kelly Living Large Live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We have some more hashers that have joined in the conversation. Who else has joined? Would you like to introduce yourself? This is Scott Rogers from San Antonio. (laughs) Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thanks, you guys, for showing up. Um, As we were talking about, we have millions of our friends across the world, and it's the best way to travel because you can show up anywhere and meet new friends. That uh, They're your friends. You just haven't met them yet. So we are talking about, uh, when we left for break, we were talking about some of the favorite events. One that's pretty standard is the red dress run, and that you never want to get rid of any of your costumes. So, Anal Rose, would you tell us about one of your favorite themed runs and maybe a little story? Sure. Um, one of my favorite themed runs is the Humpin' Bar to Bar run, which happens once a year. The uh, current and former GM that are in the area will will hair a trail around Carlsbad, California, where it's still legal to drink in the street if you want to, so not on the beach. And we'll uh, we'll do a um, a jaunt through all of our favorite drinking holes in uh, Carlsbad. And each year it's a different theme. Um, it's uh, it's been circus and um, there was uh, pirates and anything green once when it fell on St. Patrick's Day and um, Saturday morning. Just getting a um, getting creative with the costume ideas is something that I love to do. Um, my, my, my wife, Krugman, and I try to have some kind of theme within a theme for those. Right. One time for... Um, uh, similar to the bar to bar is a toga bar. And uh, instead of just right, dressing cheat like a lot of other people did, uh, she wore a, um, the Indian uh, robe type, a sari. And she, she uh, reminded me of sari, and I was a holy cow because we were that. So that was fun. <laughs> right. Very nice. Kakarazzi, do you have a favorite themed run? I have two here in San Antonio. One would be in our annual Green Mess run. Always falls around St. Patty's Day. And another one that typically falls around the uh, Thanksgiving time. Yes. Did we lose you? He mentioned Thanksgiving, and of course that's Mm -hmm our annual um, pre-Thanksgiving fetish run that we do in San Antonio. I, I believe this will be the 10th year of Thanksgiving. Yes. Is there a specific attire we should be wearing for this one? Anything goes fetish. 
uh, leather, pleather, BDSM. And uh, there's always prizes for best male and female outfits. And um, you know, like Down and Dirty was saying, it's a 10th year, 10th year in a row. So Yes. Do you all wear the same costumes? No, we, we, uh, we try to change it up every year. Yes. I don't think that's a particular costume you would share with someone. Red dress, green dress, maybe, but not the S&M and BDSM and all of that good stuff. It's probably not anything you would want to wear to work. <laughs> if you can wear that to work, we would need to know where you work so we can come through and sing you a song. Because that would be funny. And most of what we do is because it's funny. And of course, um, stealing themes is a acceptable hash behavior. And we stole that theme from Austin. So Very nice. Mm-hmm. I went to a mime hash recently. It was hilarious. All you could hear were whistles. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we stopped and we danced and we helped each other out of boxes. And we took a bus ride. Um, you know, with, there's 20 of us stacked two by two while someone drove the bus and the rest of us did like bus people do. And, uh, we did a Congo line across a couple of streets. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's awesome. It was a new one that I hadn't seen before. Uh-huh. Um, let's see what else. The Halloween stuff, St. Patrick's day. Another really fun one is our annual uh, superhero hash. It's uh, usually put on by the uh, people that have a birthday in January. And the theme is uh, make up your own superhero. And it's a pop call and people get really creative with their outfits and uh, fake superhero stuff. Very nice. Very nice. And... um, you know, you said you have hashed in several different, or you've lived in several different cities and have uh, come into a new one where you're hashing now. Are there some different traditions or different um, events or themes that you've seen? Uh, I actually am a co-founder with another hasher that I knew from the Hump and Hash in San Diego out here. We just started a, a hash to welcome virgins called the Hank Hash, which stands for uh, Half-Assed North Area. Uh, the Half-Assed what? I'm sorry. The Half-Assed North Kitsap Hash. Okay. That's the area that we're And we just, um, on Sunday, paired a trail that uh, was based around uh, rock, paper, scissors. It was based on a joke. Uh, <laughs> when we, we went hashing in Canada and and I thought that Rochambeau was French for rock, paper, scissors, and they, the Canadians schooled me and laughed at me and made me feel silly because it doesn't actually mean that. But um, <laughs> So I said, I'm going to trail like that anyway. And we, we, made the, uh, we made up teams, and people had to, uh, had to figure out which direction to go in based on whether they got rock, paper, or scissors. That was fun. Okay. Yeah. There might be people still drunk yeah. from that. <laughs> I could see that. Um, and along with some of the trail markings that somebody might see as a plop of flower or a chevron or an arrow marked in chalk. And if you're in the trees and the weeds, which we refer to as shiggy, then you could see toilet paper or surveyor's tape. We try to make sure that everything that is out on trail is biodegradable Generally, an area is cleaner when we leave than when we started, and that's very important that we remain ashers, not trashers. And, of course, in urban areas, uh, we try not to use white flour as it can be confused with uh, anthrax. <laughs> which, which you can Google, and that's, that's happened. And so there's been, there's been streets that have been shut down, and uh, Hazmat has been out for anthrax scares, and it's turned out to be... Uh, flower left there by hashers so we generally color the flower so that there's no mistake yeah i've, we learned, I've seen uh, go ahead sorry we uh go ahead, we just came from dc we just came from the dc area and they won't even use uh white flower at all in anywhere that they hash most of the time they use um if they use flower at all it's colored but they usually use just use chalk they don't want any issues especially when we're hashing around the 
you know, the Capitol or anything like that, any of the major tourist sites in D.C. Don't want to be thrown around white powder. Right. They get a little bit paranoid. And yeah. I have also heard neighboring people hanging off their balc- balconies wondering if we were throwing cocaine on the ground <laughs> because we <laughs> somebody would do that by the fistful um, or <laughs> anthrax by the fistful. And um, you hear everybody laughing. We're going to come back. When we come back from break, we're going to uh, get a little bit more into this. So please stay tuned. Give us a call if you are so inclined. 866-451-1451. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. On, on. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefugues.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit wikiwags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit mywikiwags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Welcome back. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And we are talking with some of these fine hashers from across the world, or at least across the United States for now. And uh, perhaps on next week, we'll have some from across the world and we'll put them on and you'll be completely unable to understand them. But for today, we're going to go ahead with uh, being in Phoenix and Washington State and this is our little Texas contingent right here. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to address is, you know, is this a hobby? Is it a club? Is it a clique? Is it a cult? Seriously, we've heard all of those things, but I will tell you that the friends that have been made in this club organization cult, huh, by definition, a cult keeps you and won't let you go, we will let you go if you're ready to go. But the friends that I have made have been with me mostly for a very long time and take very good care of me. And we try to take good care of each other. If someone's traveling, I try to hook them up somewhere else. When um, I was sick, when I had surgery, these fine folks took care of me. And whenever I've been traveling, I have slept on many couches and spare rooms and whatever. And I'm not sure if it's because I'm super cool or because I designated drive. But yeah, we could call Hash Crash more like Hair B and B, right? Hair B and B. It's free. <laughs> yes, Hair B and B. <laughs> and for many of the people that I've met, uh, or friends of friends, or, hey, I'm sending somebody to your house. We are usually pretty good with it. We know what we're getting. Uh, One of the things that we mentioned was the sexual innuendo. Yes, somebody may ask to see your boobs, your other body parts, 
And you can go, okay, you can agree and do that if you so choose. Or you can say, no, thanks. I've already had my Wheaties today or whatever other smart ass remark you may have for somebody. But <laughs> it's a boundary thing that we take very seriously. I'm going to let uh, Spankenstein uh, touch base on some oh, of that. He just handed that one to me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm the, the hand con- off. I'm the consent police, <laughs> I guess. No, um, clearly, it, you know, it, it's a fun group. Um, you have to have sort of an off sense of humor. If you don't find South Park funny, for example, the hash may not be for you. Um, <laughs> if you can't sing about things that um, aren't PC, you know, we make fun of everything and every body. So the hash, if you can't handle that, the hash is not for you. But that said, um, it's sort of done. It, it is done um, to mock sort of normal life. It's a, it's a way of, you know, work hard, play hard. You get out there and you just kind of act and sing kind of uh, crazy. Um, but that said, it is not an anything goes club. It is not a club where if you're a single woman or a single guy, you know, you should be able to go to the hash. It's not a club where you're going to go and, you know, you're going to be sexually harassed or uh, abused in any other way. That's just not tolerated. Um, and in fact, because there's beer, right, because there is sort of this, the 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 songs that we sing and, and the jokes that we tell, that's even more reason for us to make sure that there are boundaries. And if you want to come to the hash and break those boundaries, you'll get asked by uh, our officers, which is, which are called mismanagement, you'll be, you'll be asked to leave. Yeah. We take care of our own. We watch out for one another. We, even though the, the drinking is talked about a lot, saying about a lot, we still watch each other's back, try to make sure that no one's driving. I've taken keys away. Mm -hmm. I've driven people home and we actually take very good care of each other considering the razzing and hard time that we give one another on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. I mean, you and I are both sober hashers for them. I mean, you definitely and me almost completely. Um, so even the, the drinking is, as you said in the beginning, optional. So yeah. is the running, although that's why I go. Right. And safety is always third. So oh, very funny. That <laughs> safety third. Safety third. Right. <laughs> you know, Rose, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, not really, except that that's, that's one of the things that I worry about for the virgins is that they get the wrong idea right off the bat. Like if, um, uh, if they feel that they're not, um, that there are no boundaries and everything is just off the table and, and this may not be a safe place for them. And, um, I'm particularly wary of that for the virgins that show up. Right. And It's for singles. We have siblings. We have spouses. Um, Spankenstein and Down and Dirty were married prior to finding the hash and Uh, drug them. Not exactly. Not exactly? No, no, no. I I hashed in Rochester, New York in the 90s when we were still dating. I ran twice. I didn't know it was international. Okay. And then I was a 13-year black backslider. And then... uh, it was crash test dummy and squadgasm that told us about the hash. And I said, Hey, I think I did that a bunch of years ago. So yes, I did hash before we were dating, but okay. he didn't go right. with me. Okay. And you're in Drugum's story. Uh, we, uh, are, we're, we were introduced by a mutual, uh, friend of ours, uh, who happens to be a hasher, but she's currently backsliding. And we, um, we, I brought uh, Drugum to the hash. I introduced what I was doing with all my spare time to her. And uh, oh, fortunately, nice. it, it, uh, she caught the bug, and she's also a hasher now. Very nice. Um, backsliding, for those of you who don't know the culture, is when you miss too many trails. And sometimes life gets a hold of you, and you backslide, and then you, you think, why does my life suck and where are my friends and I haven't laughed in a very long time or acted silly or done a road trip for no apparent reason other than to do a trail in a city that's several hours away and then you come back and find us and with that I'm going to go ahead and take a short break. This is Kelly living large live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short Short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at Renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am here with some of my dear friends and fellow hashers. And we are talking about the ins, the outs, the traditions, the stories. These uh, these fine folks have been generous enough to spend this time with us into a little bit of what we do in our spare time. Probably the first some of my listeners are hearing that part of it. And as we've already mentioned, you don't have to be a drinker. You don't have to be a runner. So it's a lot, the the songs and the trails that we get to enjoy together and the camaraderie and just silliness. We have some pretty creative people out in the world for costuming, for songs, for simply just showing up and being present to a bit of a counterculture, I would say. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of acceptance and a lot of open conversation. And we talk pretty much about everything. If you've got things that you're shy about, we will probably talk about it quite a lot. And as I mentioned before, get you a little bit desensitized to that. For any person who is shy about certain body parts, you know, there's always going to be somebody bigger and somebody smaller. So just, we just move on from it. Um, oh, no. <laughs> no. I think she wanted to say something. Yeah. So, um, not sure how many of your audience members are learning about hashing for the first time, but I would say now that you know about us, uh, I challenge you to, when you're sitting at a pub or outside in a park or driving your car, <laughs> If you see a bunch of people dressed for running, but kind of we look, off, we like, look like a tailgate party gone wrong. Yeah. You know, wearing high socks because, you know, we probably just ran through the woods and what we call shiggy and we don't want to get all scratched up or we're wearing themed outfits. Um, we just look like not, a tailgate party like gone a, wrong. Yeah, like a tailgate <laughs> party gone wrong. Um, if you see that, especially if they're whistling and calling out, uh, phrases to each other, you probably have a sighting of the hash. And if you want to be sure, uh, either uh, roll down your window or stand up and just yell on, on, on. And if they shout on, on back at you, you have had a hash sighting. So fun to you. Yes. You say, are you? Which lets somebody know perhaps a half a block away, whether you're trying to find out if they are on the trail. And we will answer on on because it's understandable from half a block away. 
and a lot of the attire you will notice has on on. If you see a foot sticker, shirt, patch of some sort that says on on, then you have had a hash sighting. Are there? We've got um, we've got a pretty good group here of people that have been hashing for a good amount of time. There's going to be two thousand people here with us at this event, and we will learn new songs, and we will make new friends, and we will find more couches to sleep on and more kennels to join and enjoy while we are here. Airbnb, Airbnb. <laughs> And th- this particular hotel will never be the same after this. <laughs> no. Yeah. When we crashed Puerto Vallarta, uh, the, we stayed over a couple of days because, well, it's a resort. It's beautiful. We're going to stay and go scuba diving, make more of a vacation out of it. And one of the maitre d's was escorting us to the massages we had talked the resort out of because, well, because – that's what we do. We're going to need two of those if you're going to have more of a conversation. So we got a couple of good free massages on the beach, but we needed two of them. And we're walking through. And he says, we had this great group here. Everybody was so friendly and they hugged and they laughed and they danced and they swam. And well, some of them didn't have their clothes on and they might've been swingers. Doctors, lawyers were like, oh, wow, yeah, that's what it looks like from the outside. And with just this very few minutes to close out, we are going to sing a song. Are y'all ready? Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. Put you, your you left, left leg over my shoulder. shoulder. Put, Put your right, right leg over my shoulder. La, 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 la. Thank you for tuning in. This is Kelly Living Large, live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And as always, be well. You've been listening to Living Large with your host, Kelly Houghton. Tune in next week, join the conversation, and explore the possibilities on Kelly Houghton's Living Large. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company